Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,359. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, Excel Magic Trick 1,359, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We got to see how to split 24-hour times into eight equal zones. And we're going to see how to do it with the VLOOKUP function, the LOOKUP function, and we'll see how to do it without a lookup function using int and hour. Now, the question originally stated wanted categories like 1 AM to 3 AM, and then 301 with 1 minute to 6 AM, and so on. Now, I'm not going to do unequal category lower and upper limits. I'm going to do equal incremented categories. But no problem. What we learn here, you could easily apply to unusual time categories like this. Now, here's our data set. For each transaction, there is a time value. So at 8.27 AM, I need to assign it a category 1 to 8, in this case, 3. Now let's go over here and think about, for our first solution, which will be a lookup function, let's think about our, ca our categories. Now I'm going to have from 12 AM to 3 AM, and then 3 AM to 6 AM. But all we need for lookup function is the lower limit. So I'm actually going to start with 12 AM. Now, we need to put time values here. And time values are very specific. I'm going to put the hour, colon, the minutes, and then a space with either AM or PM. Enter. Our second lower limit will be 3. That's the hour, colon, 0, 0, space, AM, and Enter. Now, these are time values. And any time you have two values in a cell, if you highlight them and point to that little green box in the lower right-hand corner, and when you use your crosshair, and that's not the move cursor like that, not the selection cursor, but the crosshair, or as I like to call it, the angry rabbit, you can click and drag. And it will increment for you. Notice 6 PM, 9 PM. Because we had a three-hour increment here, it knew perfectly how to create those incremented lower limits. Now we need to type the actual category values you want. We want 1, Enter, 2, Enter, 3, and so on. I'm just going to type these out all the way to 8. Now, we're going to do a lookup where we return these, but maybe we want the numbers 1, 2, 3, all the way to 8. So watch this, 1, 2, Highlight both the 1 and the 2. We're going to do the same thing. We've designated the pattern Add 1. I point to my fill handle. And when I see my angry rabbit, watch this. I'm going to double click and send it down. Now, it knew to copy it down and increment because there was something to the left. It stopped because there was nothing there. Now we have our lookup table. We can have our formula look up the time try and find the nearest approximate match here, and then return either the text or the number value. Now, before we go any further, we actually want to figure out what an, a time value is in Excel, because we're using time values here, and they're over here. If you type 3 colon 0, 0 space AM, yes, that's what we see on the face of the spreadsheet. Not only that, but you can look up in the formula bar. It actually puts hour, minutes, seconds, then a space in AM, PM. But that's not actually what is underneath. It's not actually what the formulas are going to act on. So I want to show you down here. Time is always going to be the proportion of one 24-hour day. So for 3 AM, it's actually the same as taking 3 divided by 24. And when I hit Enter, yes, it's a decimal. We're 12.5% through a 24-hour day. 6 AM, we do the same trick, equals 6 divided by 24 and Enter. So it would be a quarter of the way through the day. Now I'm going to leave those there. We could prove that to ourselves. Remember, we typed this in. But as soon as we typed it in, it applied a number formatting. If you come up to the number group, you could see it's got a custom time number formatting. Just for a second, let's apply the general number formatting. This actually wipes away all of the potential number formatting that you have and shows you actually what's in the cell. So I'm going to click on General. And look at that. Sure enough, 
sitting under those time values or decimals representing the proportion of one 24-hour day. Now, Control-Z, our first couple examples won't require that we know that, but some of our later examples will require that we know that those time values are actually the proportion of one 24-hour day. All right, let's come over here. Now we're going to use VLOOKUP. I'm going to type equals VL. And for my function dropdown, I see VLOOKUP is in blue, so I hit Tab. Now the V means vertical, because our table is oriented vertically. And then lookup is because we're going to look up a time and try to retrieve one of these categories. All right, so VLOOKUP, there's four arguments. The first one, it's the lookup value. You simply click on the time. That's the thing that VLOOKUP is going to remember and try and find a matching value in the first column. Now I type comma, table array. That's where we put the table. And I always remember because it has the word table there. Now I'm going to highlight all three columns. I want the VLOOKUP table as I copy the formula down to always be locked on this table. So I hit the F4 key to put those dollar signs in. Those dollar signs say, hey, that table is locked. And that's opposed to this. That's a relative cell reference. There's no dollar sign. So as I copy the formula down, the blue cell reference will always know to go to the time value in that particular record. Now, after the table array, we type a comma to get to the next argument, column index number. We need to tell VLOOKUP which one of these columns, 1, 2, or 3, has the actual item we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. We want to get the actual text values from the 1, 2, second column. So I simply type a 2 here. Now, there's a fourth argument here. If I type a comma, we have the choice between approximate match or exact match. Now, we're doing approximate match because when VLOOKUP looks up 926 AM, it needs to know that this category right here, 9 AM all the way up to, but not including the next lower limit, should be included for category four. That's what it means by approximate match. Exact match is like when you're looking up exactly an employee's name or a product ID or something. All right, so we want approximate match. We could simply put a true in, and it would know to do approximate match. However, notice the name of this argument, range lookup. It has square brackets in it. That means if you know what the default is, you don't even have to put anything for the range lookup. And guess what? Approximate match is the default. So when I'm doing approximate match, I don't even put it in. I don't even have to put that argument in at all. VLOOKUP will know to do approximate match because that's the default. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now I'm going to go down a few cells and hit the F2 key to put this in edit mode. I'm checking to see whether the relative cell reference and that locked absolute cell reference work. It's working fine. Now let's think about how VLOOKUP does approximate match lookup. Now notice, it's looking at 7.06 AM. Here's what it does. It races through the first column, which is sorted, and it races until it hits the first bigger value. 9 AM is the first value bigger than 7.06, and then it jumps back. That's how it knows to use 3 as the category. Now, that's not technically how the binary search algorithm works. But for us learning VLOOKUP, that's the easiest way to remember. So this VLOOKUP here, it looked up 521 PM. It raced through. It bumped into the first one bigger, 6 PM, and jumped back. Now, if we come down to 902, when VLOOKUP looks it up, remember it's approximate, it races through until it finds the first one bigger. But if it doesn't find a bigger one, it just takes the last one. All right, now what if we wanted to return the item from the third column? We would simply do equals V lookup, and I'm going to use my arrow key, left arrow, to get the time, comma, the table, highlight the whole table, hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. And in this case, it's 1, 2, 3. 
The third column has the item we want to retrieve and bring back to the cell. So I type a 3. I put nothing in for range lookup because approximate match is the default. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I come down, hit F2. That is working fine. Now, notice in both cases, we did approximate match. Well, VLOOKUP means vertical, but the original lookup function is not vertical or horizontal. It's just lookup. Now, lookup can do either horizontal or vertical lookup, but lookup only does approximate match. Now, if you're doing approximate match, it's actually shorter and easier to use lookup than it is VLOOKUP. Now, there's two options here. The first one, lookup vector and result vector. That means there would be two separate vectors, one where you make a match and then one where you return something. We have a table, so we're going to use the second option. Now, the lookup value, I'm going to get the time value. Remember, lookup's only doing approximate, comma. Now, I simply highlight the table. And notice, I am not highlighting the whole table. I'm only highlighting up to the last column, which contain the text items I want to retrieve. Now, the way that lookup knows to do vertical lookup in this case is because there are more rows than there are columns. If there were more columns than there were rows, then it would do horizontal. Not only that, but there's no column index number. Lookup function always takes the item from the last column in the table you put in. Now I simply hit F4, close parentheses, and that's it. That will work. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, we could take this one step further. What if we actually wanted to use lookup or any one of these, but we didn't want the table here? If I were to delete this, right, none of this would work. Control Z, but watch this. If our values are never going to change, meaning we're always going to have one to eight categories, I'm going to choose the lookup one and hit F2. I could simply highlight that whole table. Now watch this. I'm going to click on the screen tip argument name. It highlights it. And now hit the F9 key. It actually evaluates it and shows it right in the formula using what's called array syntax. The curly bracket houses the array. The comma means go over a column, and semicolon means go down a row. Notice those two items were in the first two cells from one column to the next. Then we go down a row, and then that point 1, 2, 5, and 2, that's that second row. Now notice. It's showing us the actual time values, not the formatted time values. But that formula will work. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Hit F2, and there it is. That's called hard coding the table into your lookup function. Now if I come over here and highlight and delete, that one works fine. But of course, those will not. Control Z, that's the keyboard for undo. Now what if you didn't want to use a lookup table? Well, this is a time value, and we have a few different ways we could do this. Well, we could first start by using the hour function. Notice, hour doesn't say, give me the time value. It says serial number. That's what those numbers are. So we simply highlight that. Our formula is looking under that number formatting at the actual serial number. Close parentheses. Hour just will give us the actual hour. Double click and send it down. Now, we have eight categories. And if I take 24 and divide it by 8, that gives me 3. So watch this. I've already double clicked and sent it down. And there's a light color cell at the top that's called the active cell. I'm going to hit F2. And I'm going to edit the formula in the active cell. Divide by 3. Now, to populate this edited formula all the way down, I'm going to hold Control and Enter. Now, something crazy happened there. That formula is looking at a cell over here that has the time formatted, and it actually stole the number format. So we're going to have to come up to the drop down and apply general number formatting. Or you can use the keyboard Control-Shift-Tilde, Grave Accent. And there we have 
divided the hours by 3. Now notice, if we compare them over here, they're all the integer part is exactly off by 1. So I'm going to do the same trick. Active cell at the top, F2, I'm going to add 1. And then Control-Enter to populate it all the way down, Control-Shift-Tilde. Now we're almost there. We just need to get rid of those decimals. So active cell at the top, F2. And I'm going to use the integer function, INT. What it will do is it will take just the integer part always going down to the integer. Come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter to populate it all the way down. And there we have an alternative formula. If I go to any particular cell and hit F2, from our time value, we're simply converting to the number 1 to 8. There's one other option, too. If I say equals the time value, remember underneath there, it actually took 9 hours, 26 minutes, and divided by 24. So if I wanted to get it back up to hours, I could simply multiply it by 24. Control Enter, Control Shift tilde, double click and send it down. Now it gives me the actual hours, but we need to do our same trick. Divide by 3, add 1. Control Enter, Control Shift tilde, and we're almost there. F2, we simply need to take that and put it inside the integer function. Come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter. And there, using int and times 24, we have our integer categories 1 to 8. Well, that was a lot of fun with int times 24, int and the hour function. Lookup and a hard coded lookup table right in our formula. And then we use the good old VLOOKUP to look up based on a time value and retrieve a category 1 to 8. All right, we'll see you next video.